So I've got this curvy little animation of this ball bouncing around this box uh, called container. And what I want to do is I want to say each time the ball hits the uh, side of the box, I want the box to change color. Uh, so let's say container animate equals uh, our container. Oop. And we'll animate. And that will have our array of keyframes and then our timing object. So keyframes will be pretty simple. We'll say border color. We'll go with, let's go with orange. Uh, and then our second keyframe be back to white. Pretty straightforward. We'll say duration. Now this is where it's kind of tricky uh, because we want it to line up with our other animation. Um, but what we can do in this case, since we know it's going to hit it four times um, and there's no offset or anything on the piece animate, we can just say 1500, which is the duration of um, our piece animation. And we can divide it by four. And then we'll just say iterations, infinity, and Let's see. Oh, totally messed something up. Need a comma there. Cool, so that works. Um, but now, if this becomes 3,500, we got to change this to 3,500. Um, and if this is, you know, a lot of animations going on, it's going to get kind of complicated. We may have, you know, what if we have a dozen of these? Now we got to go change it in a dozen places. Um, but if we say, you know, piece animation is kind of our source of truth, what we can do is we can get the piece animations effect property. And off of that, we can get computed timing, right? And then we can just divide that by what we want. <clears throat> and uh, whoops, not computed timing. Off of computed timing, we're going to get the duration. So now save that. Everything is going to work exactly as it did. But if I come up here and change this to 5,000, everything works and we don't have to update the uh, duration in a bunch of different places.